Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks, free premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, my pre-fight thoughts on this, uh, Adonis Stevenson, uh, Andrews Fonfara fight were posted on DwyerSportsBetting.com, right? No shock, Stevenson fighting at home was a huge favorite, and I picked him in the fight. In part, as you'll see on that website, because Fonfara is a little bit too front foot heavy. He's offensively minded. I thought Stevenson would be able to lead him into some left hands. Right, I thought Fonfaro would want to trade punches a bit too much, which is the wrong strategy for Adonis Stevenson, right? An Adonis Stevenson opponent. But let's talk about the fight. And let me just say this. One of the light heavyweight champions, Andre Ward, has already fought and beaten a reigning light heavyweight champion. In fact, let me, let me back up. One of the super middleweight champions, Andre Ward, has fought and beaten a light heavyweight champion, Chad Dawson. Right? Well, Andre Ward, in my opinion, right now has an opportunity to make a complete mockery of the division right above him, the light heavyweights. Because I have little doubt in my mind that Andre Ward walks through Adonis Stevenson. Let's just say as I was watching this fight, I really wasn't that impressed by Adonis Stevenson. He had some good moments in the fight. I'm not here to take away those good moments, right? But he showed so many limitations that a fighter in his prime, right, with Andre Ward's skill set, should be able to make him look very bad almost from the opening bell. Let me go one step further. A fighter past his prime, right, with Bernard Hopkins' skill set, should give Adonis Stevenson all he can handle. I think Stevenson would have a very hard time against either Ward or Hopkins, right? Oscar De La Hoya during the fight sent out a tweet saying Bernard Hopkins destroys Adonis Stevenson. I'll tell you what, he might have a point. Let's talk about what Stevenson did well here. Stevenson's left hand is one of the best punches in boxing. He's a southpaw. It's with the left that Stevenson dispatches opponents. Right here in this fight. Stevenson comes out, looks good, is riddling Fonfara, who again is too front foot heavy, and comes in too straight. In other words, Fonfara's body is there to get hit. He's not bent, he's not crouched, he's not side angled. He's a bit too straight. Stevenson makes the most of it. Stevenson, of course, throws a wicked left. Let me point out, too, it's interesting looking at films. It's not a left with a curve. This is kind of like a straight Manny Pacquiao left hand. So what you'll notice is some of the guys he's hurt in the past, they're prepared for a left coming in off at the side. But Stevenson's left will literally get inside of their guard and hit them straight. Same thing with the body punches, right? At times, when Farah has his hand up, Stevenson's not throwing curved lefts to the body. He's actually coming straight, right? Stevenson's left hands to the body were devastating. The problem is that they're all straight, right? Stevenson has a beautiful straight left. If a Bernard Hopkins or an Andre Ward comes in and is prepared to block a straight left. In other words, they realize Stevenson's trying to hit them on the tip of the nose. 
right? If they focus on the straight left, I believe it's an open question on whether Stevenson can throw that left hand any other way. Right? Stevenson's a side profile. The left's coming from long distance. Stevenson would have to change his mechanics to throw the left with a loop. Let me make another point. I think this is a significant one. Stevenson is in his mid-30s. Right? He needs distance between himself and an opponent because he's limited inside. So he needs to be moving around outside. In my opinion, he can't pace himself. It's not that he's out of shape in this fight. Right? And I know in the post-fight interview he talks about hurting his left hand. That's not his problem. His problem is his fight style is such that he has to be in fourth gear. Why is he out in the 12th round throwing a lot of punches? It's because he can't fight any other way. His ability to clinch is limited. He actually had to clinch in this fight. He gets knocked down. He gets up. He's, he's trying to clinch. His ability to clinch is limited. His ability to fight inside is limited. His jab is not a Larry Holmes jab. He can't just stand there and bludgeon you with the jab while resting. He has to jump around the ring. Right? He has to jump around the ring to try to hit you with an unexpected straight left that he throws from about here. Right? If you get too close to Stevenson, you realize how defensively limited he is. Look at the sequence right before Funfara drops the right hand that drops Stevenson. You're going to notice as Funfara, who's on his front foot, is coming forward, there's nothing to stop him from throwing that right hand. In other words, Stevenson's defense is his offense. Once you get by that straight left, and that's what it is, right? It's a straight left. Once you get by the straight left, Stevenson doesn't have much else to keep you off of him. It's just that that straight left is like a 100 mile an hour rising fastball. Right? So, of course, you're gun shy because you understand your margin of error isn't that great. Let me also point out that Fanfara couldn't defend his body and his head at the same time. Right? The right side of his body, it was clear he had to guess what Stevenson was going to throw. If he guessed wrong, Stevenson was going to land the punch. So, if Fanfara thought Stevenson was going to throw a left up top and Fanfara raised his hand, he was exposed with his body because he's in too straight and he's too upright. Understand that Bernard Hopkins knows how to bend his head, right? There are fighters who can have an elbow close enough to their waist, who know how to tuck their head, who know how to tuck their head behind their glove to take away the entire left angle, right? You know, the straight left angle that Stevenson needs. You can take that away from him if you're defensively gifted. Worse yet, if you jump inside on Stevenson, especially on Stevenson's right side, I don't think Stevenson has enough of a right hook to punish you. I think what Andre Ward would find is virgin territory. He'd jump inside, there wouldn't be that much resistance. Let me point out too, you can circle away when a guy's one-handed like Stevenson. You can circle away from that straight left hand. Right? You can come in over here. Let's say Stevenson's like this. You can come in over here. You can jump in over here. What's Stevenson gonna do? He's not defensively gifted. He's not gonna have a hand up here. He's not gonna hit you with a Floyd Mayweather 
Lee Hook. That's not who he is. He has the straight left, but he doesn't have the Vladimir Klitschko jab to keep you off of him. You know how when you watch a Klitschko fight, and even though Klitschko has a big right hand, even though that right hand can take you out, you notice how Klitschko at times can kick it in neutral. Even though he's a great athlete, he doesn't have to jump around the ring. He can click it in neutral and just hit you with a jab. Right? He can slow the fight down so he doesn't get winded. He doesn't have to jump around like Stevenson. Stevenson's jab's not Klitschko level. Also, Klitschko can hit you with a left hook. In other words, Klitschko has a big time right hand, but I have to worry about the left hook on the way in. Look at the Ray Austin film. Klitschko Ray Austin, right? I'm not even sure, as I've said in other videos, if Klitschko throws a right hand in that fight. Now contrast that with Stevenson. He has a perfunctory jab. He has a devastating straight left. To set it up, he's dancing around, right? He's the light heavyweight version of Manny Pacquiao. The problem is that he's too specialized, right? That straight left is the 100 mile an hour fastball. But if you start to time it, he doesn't have the knee buckling curve. He can't get you off the plate. Right? I believe Andre Ward, 168 pound Andre Ward, has an opportunity to jump the fence again. Right? Fight Stevenson at the Bell Center before a sellout crowd and deconstruct him. Right? If anyone's going to get tired in that fight, it's going to be Stevenson. The only question in that fight would be if Stevenson would be able to land the straight left to knock down Andre Ward. Because there's no way, in my opinion, he outboxes Andre Ward. Let's talk about Kovalev. You know, understand Kovalev is two-handed. Now Kovalev and Stevenson are linked by Darnell Boone. Now I haven't seen, I've seen the Boone knockout of Stevenson. But I haven't seen the Boone knockout of Kovalev. Right? Both guys have had issues. Don't think for a second that Stevenson would be the only one with questions about his chin in that fight. But I'll say this. Stevenson looks so unprepared for right-handed Funfara's straight rights that I wonder how he would deal with Kovalev's volume. I think he'd have a major problem. Right? Kovalev's a hard hitter. The only question for me would be could Kovalev dodge that straight left? Right? Let me point out too, Kovalev can throw punches on a hook. Kovalev is more complicated than you think. Right? I don't think Stevenson would be prepared for the angles at which Kovalev would be able to throw punches. Right? I also think Kovalev is very good at applying pressure. He got a very skilled technician, Gabriel Campillo, backing up when he fought Campillo. Right here, I believe if he runs over to Stevenson's right side, what exactly is Stevenson going to be able to do? Keep in mind, Kovalev hits as hard as Stevenson. Right, so let's just put it this way. Stevenson's left looked tremendous against Fonfara. 
Stevenson showed his power, knocked down Funfara multiple times. The left hands to the body were devastating. Why is it after that great start did Funfara actually look like he had taken over the fight? When we get to the knockdown, understand the knockdown's not flash. That's a real knockdown. When Stevenson gets up, he looks bad. He's the one holding on to Fonfara. Indulge me for a moment. Could you imagine if Stevenson tried to hold on to Andre Ward that way? You know Andre knows all the tricks. You know Andre and Virgil Hunter, they have stuff figured out. If Stevenson gets up buzzed and comes in sloppily with his hands like this, he's not even slick when he's trying to clinch you. If he comes in with his hands like this, you know the tricks fighters do. Ward could extend his hands. Make sure that Stevenson can't grab him. Ward could even bend at the waist and back away. Use it as an opportunity as Stevenson comes forward to try to grab him. To riddle Stevenson's body. The problem with the angles is we know Stevenson has to be a little distance away from you. Look at the distancing in the fight. He has to be a little distance away from you to surprise you with that straight left. He's not a guy who can fight you up close. So wouldn't Hopkins or Ward neutralize much of Stevenson's game simply by their positioning in the ring, not being in position to be hit with the straight left? If Hopkins does what he does, ducks his head, and just runs in, throwing punches while he's not looking. How's Stevenson going to tie him up? Right? Isn't Hopkins' problem dealing with a Jermaine Taylor type jab and volume? Did you see much of Stevenson's jab against Fonfara? There are moments in the fight where somebody is throwing a great jab. That's Fun Farah's jab. Let me say this too. I know this is controversial. You know, if Fun Farah sits down and looks at the film and figures out that his body was too available for these straight left hands to the body, if he figures out that if he comes in a little bit more at a side profile, right, if he figures out how to just hide his body, and bend a little bit to take away the straight left hand. And if he looks at the success that he had with the jab when he decided to throw it. I'm not sure how a rematch between these two would turn out if they fought in Chicago. Funfara's adopted city. Right? I thought it was interesting too. Look at the 12th round. Stevenson plays to the crowd. He's talking to Fonfara. He's yelling at Fonfara. Looks great. Then suddenly there are 20 seconds left in the fight. Why is it that Stevenson looks completely winded at that moment? Completely winded. It's too bad Fonfara couldn't just take a step back and start throwing a combination up top. Right? Because Stevenson looks spent at the end of the fight. I'm telling you, Stevenson's survival skills look so suspect that it was unclear to me whether he was going to be able to survive after he hits the canvas. And as I said before, the sequence before he hits the canvas, it's not like he has a hand up and Funfara threads the needle and hits him with a great shot, like Manny Pacquiao hit Marquez with a great shot in their second fight, dropping him. Right? There's no defense up. 
Stevenson's hands are down. He's vulnerable. Let me just say this. If your hands are down like this against Sergei Kovalev, good luck. I think Stevenson, let's just say the more film there is on him, the more people have to wonder. Okay? Chad Dawson, I'll just put it this way. Right? Understand Chad Dawson had been down in other fights, right? You saw what Andre Ward did to Chad Dawson, right? It's a shame. Chad got beaten. I'm not saying Chad deserved anything. He got beaten. You get hit, you hit the canvas, you get up, your knees are wobbling, you lost the fight. Okay, fair enough, right? That was a good stoppage. But you wonder what would have happened if a technician like Dawson would have hung around in that fight long enough to figure out the angles, right? Because half the thing with Stevenson is he's throwing the punch from about here, right? That's about half the thing. You can't figure out the angles. Had Dawson started flashing a jab and moving away from Stevenson's left hand and then started walking down Stevenson, what would have happened? Right? I'm here to tell you, in my opinion, Stevenson gets stopped by Andre Ward. In my opinion, and I hate to see great fighters who are past their prime in against sluggers. Right? You know, sometimes that ends badly. But Bernard Hopkins has a lot to work with here. He's going to know that the only risks are straight punches. Right? Straight punches coming in on his right side. Right? You know, because uh, Stevenson's a lefty. Stevenson would be throwing them toward Hopkins' right side. He'd have a lot to work with, especially since if Hopkins gets inside, he'll be the superior fighter. Let's see how this shakes out in the light heavyweight division. Let's just say there are going to be a lot of guys thinking about taking on Adonis Stevenson. Don't be surprised if the winner of Frotch Groves decides, hey, I don't want to deal with the Gale or Brandon Gonzalez. Let me deal with Stevenson, a higher profile fight in a different division where I have more political cover. Right? Because if I lose to Stevenson, the argument would be, hey, well, I'm really a 168er, not a 175er. And, of course, if I beat Stevenson, then my name becomes one of the biggest names in boxing. And, of course, longtime subscribers know that I'm a big fan of James DeGales. I don't know how Stevenson would even be competitive against a guy who can seamlessly switch from southpaw to righty. In fact, I'll even go further. Canada. Can you hear me? The Jean Pascal, who fought and beat Lucien Boutte, would give Adana Stevenson all he can handle. Stevenson won the fight. He looked great at times. I thought he got undressed. One man's opinion. Let me hear yours. Let's have the full discussion. Leave the comments for all of us here on YouTube in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.